welcome to one more part of our Crow's Nest series. In each of the small towns that make up the Crow's Nest municipality, there is a Crow's Nest heritage route. Uh, this outlines some of the historical buildings or what may have once stood in an area that now has more modern buildings. We're going to touch on as many as we can and show you the most interesting ones. So according to the information on these historical placards, Maple Leaf was actually its own community that came up in the uh, very early 1900s. Uh, it was mostly workers that uh, worked for the Mohawk Tipple. Um, however, it always was a very small community. It did have a school and a hotel, but not a whole heck of a lot else. It was eventually incorporated into the town of Bellevue in the 1950s, but it still didn't have its own water supply until they were both uh, part of the municipality of the Crow's Nest Pass. Uh, nowadays, it is marked off as a separate boulevard and such, but we are still within the village of Bellevue. And we're outside of this old beauty right now. It's just tucked into a residential area. This used to be two towns, Bellevue and Maple Leaf. Now, I believe this is just called the Maple Leaf like suburb of the town now. This building that we're outside of used to be a grocery that was made by an Italian couple with bricks from Blairmore. Over time, it was converted into a schoolhouse to try to relieve overcrowding at the Bellevue School, and then back into a grocery. And now I believe it's a private residence, but it is still the original brick. <laughs> yeah, and another thing with this heritage route is they have road signs telling you that you're on the heritage route, but they also have these green and orange, very eye-catching signs as well too. So it makes it really easy to know where to go when you're wanting to look at these buildings. And if anybody asks, you know, what are you doing over there? Well, there's a sign. I like that uh, door knocker on the door there. Like, looks like a lion's head. Oh yeah. That looks really cool. I feel a little sad that the residents now need to keep their windows boarded up in such a way because they do have a historical building and people stop to look in. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure they knew what they were getting into when they purchased it. Yep. So this is the old Bellevue garage. Closed down in the 60s. That artwork is cool, eh? It is. Yeah. It's a beautiful shade of orange, just like the signs. Well, it's not the original. Uh, this particular building was damaged in a fire and then rebuilt in the in 1931, it says. Oh, okay. Um, it was originally a garage and auto repairs in 1919 but obviously as demand for different things changed and the families that owned it uh, moved away or such it's been many many businesses since then including like cable mechanical body yeah. shop radiator you name it but being a historical building even if it's empty right now they can't they can't destroy it it's a historical piece yeah like a lot of old buildings in the crow's nest pass there's one interesting tidbit on here i haven't seen anywhere else yeah bellevue wasn't always known as bellevue at least the uh river bottoms river bottom was sometimes called lime city before 1912. yeah so, that's just, <laughs> so probably a kind of a, a separate section Mm -hmm. separate community kind of like maple maple leaf yeah and there were some shanty towns in between the established villages as well so perhaps yeah. something like that as i don't well. doubt it back in those times no not at all yeah i like that it's got christmas lights they, they probably still has power so these lights probably get turned on on the holidays very cool yeah and then they've got their uh old uh overhead door oh that's really cute yeah just painted onto a rock <laughs> it's got the got like the muffler pipes back here too it's so cool the crow's nest pass like such a tragic history you know, people coming out here trying to make a life for themselves in the past and, you know, warring against the elements and disasters, and multiple, multiple things that went wrong out here. But modern day, it is such a cool place, like just such a so much history here and it's all on display. Yeah, I always I always love coming out here. 
So further down the road in Bellevue, there's this beautiful military placard for people that served in World War I, World War II, placard for uh, Korean War. This uh, place here became a private residence in 1986, but it used to be a barber shop, and prior to that, it was a doctor's office. In 1935 uh, is when it changed from a doctor's office, and then it was moved to this location here. Oh. And that's when it became a barber shop and stayed so for 20 years. So it's really neat going through these towns because like we've got buildings over there with signs on them too. People are still living their lives here, you know, living here, working here. Tourists like us are coming here and just building up modern day life and living modern day life around these old buildings that just stand like monuments to the past. The town of Hillcrest is the unfortunate site of Canada's worst coal mining disaster in history. On June 19th of 1914, several gas explosions in short succession ripped through the mine. Even men working on the surface were not spared as thick concrete ceilings and walls crumbled. A total of 189 workers died, either from the initial blast or from toxic gases overcoming them. Some survived and made it to the surface, only to go back in trying to rescue friends and family, only to perish. 172 of the dead were immigrants, leaving 130 widows and over 400 fatherless children in Canada and across the globe. Condolences came from around the country, including from King George V. The start of World War just days after the disaster overshadowed the horrible news, but with over half of the town's workforce dead, Hillcrest would never forget. Many are buried in this mass grave in the old Hillcrest Cemetery grouped according to their religious cultures, and a memorial was erected in the year 2000. So now we're moving into the town of Frank. We did a video on the Frank Slide rock slide disaster from the early 1900s. The rock slide destruction still right along the highway for everybody to see. And interestingly enough, built around the site of that disaster, there is still a town of Frank just down this way. Gas station, a and there's an art gallery and life still continues and, and thrives around here. And of course the Frank's Live Interpretive Center is up the hill. Along the highway, there's the Pier Country Bar and Grill. Used to be a hotel. Uh, one of those signs are over on the door. Rita and I actually had lunch here earlier. It was absolutely divine. And there's something really cool we wanna show you down here. So the Dunlop Guns Monument is in memory of people from the Frank area that served in the war and died overseas, no known graves. And this is up as a monument to their service in loving memory. The Dunlop name comes from the father who came back from the war, but none of his three sons did. Oh, he, wow. he arranged for these to be brought to Canada and put on his property. Eventually they were moved to this location when his property was eventually sold. Yeah, let's get up the steps here and take a closer look. Replica machine guns. Replica bigger gun. just points out towards Turtle Mountain. One thing that's interesting too that uh, Rita and I both keep forgetting is that back when Frank opened up in 1901, only two years before the big rock slide disaster, it was actually part of the Northwest Territories. Technically it wasn't considered Alberta back then. But yeah, that's a beautiful monument back there. I can't believe I've never stopped and looked at that before. Well, 
to be fair, there isn't really a convenient place to park unless you want to use someone's personal driveway. <laughs> you need to make the effort to stop or, and walk back. Or the liquor store like we did. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lovely little, little public art gallery here. I know that they do student art as well as dedicated artists, but unfortunately it's not open right now. I remember when we lived down south, we came out to the pass the one day and we stopped at that gallery and you bought a student's artwork that yeah. was on sale there. Yes, it was a year end show, so it was all student work. Yeah. And there was a painting on unstretched canvas that I fell in love with but the student had forgotten to sign his name. So uh, according to the rules of the gallery, I purchased the painting, but I couldn't pick it up until the show was done. But I left a note with the gallery owner, please, please, please encourage the artist to sign their work before yeah. I take it away. That's really cool though. Like imagine being a student and just doing, you know, a painting for art class and then it ends up being in a gallery and perhaps even being sold. That's. That's such a confidence booster. I like that. That's also why when I saw it was a student show, I wanted to go in because a long time ago, I was one of those students. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we're in Blairmore. I used to come out here a lot for work. When I worked in the South, this was the furthest West we would come out on our commute. And we're just outside of the courthouse, I think. It's got a for rent sign in the window. The front door says courthouse and the placard out front says historic courthouse circa 1923 but of course there's a for rent sign so is it still a courthouse has it been converted into something else would you live in an apartment building if it clearly said courthouse over the front door let us know i feel like it'd be really hard to get people to come over you'd be like hey man come on over for board games and beers and shots and doritos and all that oh where do you live oh just come on down to the courthouse everybody just looks at you and they're like this feels like a trap. I've heard of projects <laughs> where more modern buildings like schoolhouses converted into apartments. Heck, I've heard of shopping malls being converted into apartment complexes. Yeah. Can you man? Oh, yes. Now that I think about it, I've heard of old banks and old jailhouses being made into bed and breakfasts. I'd do it. I'd camp that. <laughs> I would too. That'd be different. That'd be interesting. Imagine your front door is a bank safe. <laughs> While Rita's over at the buildings over there, I just wanted to come over and take a look at this. So we've got another war memorial, absolutely beautiful, massive plaque. And then we've got our Alberta flag with our coat of arms, Canada flag, and a Crow's Nest Pass municipal flag. In honor of those who served in the Second Great War and the Korean War, lest we forget erected by the Crow's Nest chapter. And as you can see, you've got the railway running through Blairmore. The Sartoris Road that we camped out of earlier in this series is back that way. So I'm currently outside of the Olivia Block Building, which is one of the most oldest intact buildings in Blairmore at all. Frankly, if I come around the corner here, you can kind of see from the damage. Yes, it is rather old. However, this building here used to serve as a town hall and a furniture store and hosted a great many of the local clubs, such as the Veterans Association, Elks Club, Lions Club, etc., etc. There's many more plaques on the buildings behind me, uh, including like the building that used to be the newspaper and another meeting uh, hall and the uh, union hall and the such. Picture an Old West... Hi Dustin. <laughs> Picture an Old West style main street. These were all facades and all of the uh, kinds of buildings you would expect to have in a row. Every like retail, dry goods, grocery, meeting halls, everything you could imagine was along this road. So here we are on just a tiny little piece of highway right directly across from the town of Blairmore. However, the road is closed with quite a dedicated uh, stack of barricades, but just down the hill a little ways this way is another abandoned tipple. Um, it is behind a fence, so let's see how close I can get for some better pictures. So now that we're much closer, you can see that the barbed wire has certainly been absolutely ravaged in places. since It's just the stumps left in places and you could just easily walk in, which certainly explains the much sturdier fence line around the tipple. There is exposed 
timbers that look like they can come down within the next couple of years. Trees could fall, concrete could crumble. Um, the upstairs is just rusted steel sh sheets. I can't imagine the floor in there would be stable. It certainly makes sense that for the safety of the public, especially the young and reckless that would go in there, would need to keep, stay protected from themselves and make sure that this is not an accessible historic site. So our last stop in the Crow's Nest Pass brings us to the town of Coleman. We're outside of the Crow's Nest Museum and Gift Shop, which also used to be the Coleman High School apparently. And it says it's closed. So this building in Coleman that used to be a high school slash museum, there's a stone plaque that says Holy Ghost Church. It has a nice little park area. We're just stopping to take a little break. There's some stuff in the back to look at. And Rita, guess what I found out? What? I tried plugging my phone into the outlet over there and the building has power. Oh my goodness, Dustin. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <sighs> really, Dustin? Really. <laughs> Powered enough? Yeah, she's charging. Alrighty. Well, earlier in this series, we tried this in a uh, United Farmers Association card lock gas station slash bathroom, but that was a shared space and didn't get to have it in there for very long. So we'll just let it sit here and uh, have a little break. As shall we have a little break in this beautiful area that they've got open to the public. So babe, we've talked about how watched water doesn't boil, watched paint doesn't dry, watched grass doesn't grow. Does a watched jackery charge? Have you been staring at it a little too obsessively over the last few minutes, Dustin? Because I think that's your answer. Um, no comment. <laughs> we had a nice little break outside the Coleman Museum. The Jackery got up a full 10%, so it's at 40%. So I'm gonna unplug that and load that back up in the truck, and we will take a look at what they have on display in this little courtyard. All right. So there's a bunch of cool stuff behind this gate here, but as the gate is shut, we can only admire it from afar. This building must be the original museum because it says Crow's Nest Museum on the far end in very rusted out lettering. Mm. The Great Divide, Alberta, British Columbia. So I bet this is the museum storage now because the actual yeah. museum is the old high school. Looks like a good storage hub. And over here, we've got a whole bunch of stuff we can walk right up to. That's cool. I like it when they just have this kind of stuff on display. Some old like farming equipment, an old cart. They've even got an old uh, piece of a locomotive train up here. Well, that's cool, it's even still got steps on it. That's really cool. It's got a nice little gravel display. Wow, and the door's open on this side. That's a bit of a step and then some. Oh, this is cool. Control, rear headlight, front headlight, cab light, gauge light, and heater. Start button, all these cool little dials. Oh, this is so cool. When I saw this from afar, I didn't think you'd be able to just come in like this. 
And then you can even just get right in, see all the belts, all the assembly, the inner workings. That is so cool. And then they got the door going out the other side. Some markings on there, that almost looks like chalk. I just gotta be careful I don't trip over anything trying to get out. Oh, hello. Come aboard. <laughs> We're going places. In my head we are anyway. <laughs> Split rails were heated in this kiln and then bent into arches to support the main entries in the mine. I mean, yeah, you'd want to reinforce the entryways into the mines every way possible, for sure. Yeah. I can only imagine how hot this oven had to get to bend uh, that sheer amount oh, of steel. Oh, this is so cool. It just got like a whole oven on display. That's awesome. Hold on, I'm gonna... You're gonna stick the GoPro in there. I am gonna stick the GoPro in there. Oh, hello. Hello. We meet in yet another hole in the wall. Such cultured meetings we have. This is pretty tight quarters, but ventilation is favorable. I give it a solid four out of 10. Would you camp that? Probably. Can you fit? Probably not. Fair enough. I'm willing to bet that small children play in there. <laughs> oh, probably. After their mom starts screaming at them to not to. <laughs> I would have camped in that when I was a little guy. Of course you would have. <laughs> oh, hey, look at this. Mm -hmm. Are these still? <laughs> oh, there's nothing in there. <laughs> Just like regular fireplaces, you needed a place to get the ashes out. So yeah. this is where they would have brought in their big old push brooms yeah. and what have you and scooped everything out. That's cool. I like that. Oh, there you go. You can get in that way. Rita's going into the oven. What a hero. I like it in here. I'm trying to see if I can see it. I'm scooting along to one of the bigger windows. Oh, hold on. Well, hello. Well, oh, hello. Yet another hole in the wall. So you're living in the oven these days? Yes, yes. What'd you do to get demoted to that place? Haven't you heard all those stories about witches being shoved into ovens? Oh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yes, very much so. Very much. I expected it to smell in here, but it okay. does not. Well, have a nice life. It's been a pleasure. See ya. <laughs> Well, that's going to be about it for our heritage trail for the Crow's Nest Pass. There's still so many more buildings and things on display to be seen. Uh, we are on our last day in our Crow's Nest Pass series. We've got one more night of camping. We just don't have time to see it all. Um, but if you ever find yourself in this area, definitely come out and check some of the stout for yourself. It's, as I said before, it's absolutely incredible just seeing all these old buildings, some of them dating back to the early 1900s and some of them are still in use today. Some of them are more or less abandoned, but still preserved and taken care of, and people still live their lives and do life and work and pleasure and all that stuff around these old buildings. It, there's just a huge sense of pride out in this area of Alberta. So we're gonna get on the road. We've got our one more night of camping. We're getting into the evening hours. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see y'all in the next video, folks. Stay classy. <laughs>